Today we're going to talk about readability, and specifically the Gunning Fog Index readability. So what is a readability index? A readability index is an estimate of how many years of education are required to read and understand a given text. There are two in prominent use. The Gunning Fog Index, named after Robert Gunning, and the Smog, or Simple Measure of Gobbledygook, index. Readability indexes use measures of sentence length in the number of words in a sentence and word complexity as measured by the number of syllables to estimate text accessibility. Their primary limitation is that word complexity varies widely. For example, the word kludge has only one syllable, but it's little known outside of technical circles. Approximately, has five syllables, but is a very familiar word. So why are readability indexes helpful? Well, they're helpful because they help us think about basic demands that writers place upon their readers. It helps us become familiar with vocabulary and semantics, and it helps us think about the complexity of our grammar and syntax. It also makes us consider the demands we place upon the reader's ability to retain and process long passages, somewhat similar to the way a computer buffers data. Well, let's compare two brief sentences here. The first one has 35 words, and the average syllables per word is 1.82. In the second sentence, we have only 11 words, and the average syllables per word is only 1.36. And although this difference of only half of a syllable per word seems minuscule, it's actually quite profound. When we change from a greater to a lesser complexity, what is lost in translation? Well, for one thing, when we use shorter sentences and simpler, more familiar words, we tax our readers less, but we lose something. We lose the meaning and nuance of longer sentences and more sophisticated words and grammar. We lose semantic content through what we might call dumbing down. We also can lessen the intimacy between the writer and the reader, and we may lose some or all of the writer's original voice. But what does simplifying our word choice and shortening our sentences buy us? For one thing, it gives us broader access to more diverse audiences. It gives us much more direct conveyance of content and fewer opportunities for misunderstandings. In short, speed. The Robert Gunning Fogg Index algorithm is somewhat complicated when you first look at it. We take a continuous passage of approximately 100 or more words. Then we find the average sentence length by dividing the number of words by the number of sentences. We count the number of words with three or more syllables, not including proper nouns. For example, we would exclude words like Samantha. And common suffixes such as ES, ED, or ING are not counted as syllables. They're very common. And we exclude compound words and familiar words. Then we average the sentence length and the percentage of complex words, and that is to say we take these numbers and we add them directly. We multiply the result by 0 0.4, and that gives us our Robert Gunning Fogg Index. Let's look at two passages. The first one is taken from a small business industrial research government website, and it explains how to apply for a grant. Its Gunning Fog Index comes in at 21.1. It's quite high. And what that's telling us is that approximately 21 years of education are required to read and understand this passage. Perhaps it's no accident that most applicants for SBIR grants are college educated at a higher level, M master's or PhD level. Here's the familiar Sermon on the Mount from Matthew 5 through 12. It has a Gunning Fog Index of only eight. That is, approximately only eight years of education are required to read and understand this familiar Bible passage. So what are the take-home lessons from the Gunning Fog Readability Index? 
Well, the first lesson is that shorter sentences with simpler, more familiar words require fewer years of education to understand and retain. They are more readable texts. They tax their readers less. But shortening our sentences and simplifying our word choice may sacrifice semantic, content, nuance, and sophistication at the altar of speed and simplicity. But maybe not if you're a clever enough writer. Also, we want to consider apt writing strategies in order to make a choice between writing those longer, more sophisticated and nuanced sentences and keeping things short and simple. The three aspects of apt writing are audience, purpose, and tone, and these are discussed in a separate video, which is linked to this one. Whatever you do, know why you are making the editorial choices you make. Don't choose them just out of happenstance. If you have more questions, feel free to contact me at your convenience. Thank you.